right. Um, something was brought up that I actually wanted to uh, address in a video, and that is that the scenario editor for EU3 actually works for EU4. And um, right here, basically, we have the thing you do. You basically browse to whatever folder I have on Steam, so um, it's in my Steam folder. And then you can add a mod on top of that. Now, there's two of these because I have two separate ones in different folders um, because it was being weird before. So I just have this one selected. I could probably just bring up this one, and it will work fine, too. Um, I basically have to figure out which one it's actually doing. Right now I have to swap between those two. Because I had to install it in a weird place, and it was like, no, you, you've got to have... It was looking in a weird place for them. So, um, and you could also load a save game onto this for save game editing if you really wanted to. I'm editing the main scenario itself, so um, you do that, and then in a second it'll pop up. Go. Make it smaller. All can see. Yep. And basically, uh, if you remember, I did this for for. EU3, but it's actually it actually works a lot better now. Uh, I'm guessing that they optimized the program and stuff like that, so kudos to them for making it work for other stuff. Now, apparently it works for a lot of Paradox uh, Cloud Switch Wits engine game. And there's a lot of different things. I, I'm pretty sure I showed this off in um, in the, the EU3 video. But look at the things, you can look at the cultures, and stuff like that. I've changed a lot of the cultures to work better. So. Provinces that are English, provinces that are Scottish, Welsh, Breton. I might change this to Welsh. Swedish. I, I fixed a lot of the German cultures, German instead of French. Uh, I didn't put them in the French group because. Uh, that would make things too easy for France. Bavaria has some weird Austrian. I don't know why that's Austrian, but I'll leave it like that, whatever. Uh, Austria basically doesn't exist. We have Bavaria in its place. This Prussian culture, Romanian, etc. I made a bunch of new cultures. This is Greek, uh, Greek, Persian. Basically, to make things harder for me over here, this is, I think, Kurdish. There's Georgian, Persian, Syrian, the Persians down here, Egyptian, Persian, Arabian, Persian. Uh, I didn't get too creative with the names. This is basic Persian. I, I thought about calling it Imperial or High Persian or something, but that sounds too snooty. Turkestani up here. And then already in our culture group are... are um, It's called East Persian in the in the text files, and then there's a uh, Baluchi, but that's like I don't know six provinces there that are you know not within the bounds of our old empire, so uh, that's fine. Um, you can do a lot of stuff here. Um, uh, I was going to just show you with Notepad++ how to, how to change basic stuff, but since this works, for example, we can go in here and we can go in and say, well, Zagreb is done by Amalfi. And you can see here, Owner Controller Add Core. This is basically how most of the uh, Clausewitz Engines games work, except for Crusader Kings 2. <laughs> Which has a big thing with uh, individual characters owning different stuff. But that that's neither here nor there. Now the Z's are the basic uh, conversion provinces. And it actually ran out of Z's and started going into Y's. Now, for example, the Persian Empire over here is Z81. And it starts at the top of the map and starts going down. For example, Iceland is Z00. It looks like it's a zoo on the map, so yeah. Zoo. Um, as you can see, I, I modded some of the borders quite a bit and uh, a lot of these things you see are not necessarily 
individual countries, but some of them are vassalized things of different stuff. And I, I changed a few things, what people were, and uh, just fixed the cultures, basically to make the map a little bit more interesting, because there's a lot of... I, I have... I'm of the opinion that culture spreads too rapidly in, in, in CK2, and I'm always disappointed when I see that entire cultures are wiped out, uh, which is one of the reasons I, I changed my... Uh, the way I see it is that Persian is not necessarily an ethnic thing, it's, it's a cultural thing. So the people who were there before are still there, um, and they just happen to follow our practices. So there could be still some ethnic tensions and things like that. Um, things like that were fairly common. Um, the colors you can't change here. You have to go into the common folders. I don't know why they didn't change this. You can change the colors. But this just shows the... You can change entire countries here. This is the history file file for the... Uh, um, for the individual country. Sweden here in this example. You can change the technology group, primary culture. You can add accepted cultures here, religions, different other modifiers. Um, like, for example, France has a special modifier, culture group union French. So the French culture groups will consider France to be their home country, so to speak. So they'll, not, they'll never get any penalties for having French culture people, which is the way it's supposed to work. Um... Germany, for example, I removed because it is the German culture union, so they would be like, ah, oh, super German. And the same thing with Russ, who is now Muscovy. Um, they are, I think, Zoroastrian, yes. These things don't actually do anything. They're just kind of junk in the files. You can see that they have a hash before them. Um, so since I discovered that I can actually use this, I've been doing this for a lot of the stuff. I, I was doing things individually, but I... I'd, <laughs> I figured out that I didn't have to, so that, that's, that's very nice. This is going to save me a lot of time. As you can see, I'm almost done with most of the basic province changes. I, I still have a few things to tweak here and there, um, but I'm mostly done with this. Uh, one of the things to note here, if you're going to go in to change this stuff, is that there's culture religion up here, but sometimes there'll be a culture change over time. And these are basically modifiers that tell you when... Uh, these things happen. So these remove cores are just basic junk that the converter does to basically tell you none of these other countries have tags. And if you want these countries to have tags, you actually have to remove this. This is the start date. Um, it also says whether it's in the HRE or not, which makes it very easy to, to modify things like that. You have to do to change the culture, religion, and owner and controller at the bottom if there's a, there's a file like this that tells you at the end date which... Uh, the beginning date, I should say, the start date that you're going for, which country owns that. So that's that's important to note because over time, a lot of things, for example, if you were wanting to make, um, starting later in the game and want to make Sweden Catholic, um, they later in the game in the normal game have formed. So you have to, you have to fix that. Um, other things about this uh, thing... It actually still shows you the whole world. You can go in and change different stuff. Um, I'm not going to mess with the Asian things any, and I'm not going to mess with the New World too much. I don't think there's anything I really need to change there. Um, and what I've done with Africa is I've um, basically deblobbed the uh, whoever was the top level there. Um, and basically made the countries here back to their original states, with the exception that they are now Muslim and have different rulers and stuff like that. But I closed this thing because of balance reasons, um, to protect these guys down here, basically. And for that same reason, to protect Swahili, I've removed this province from being um, owned by Abyssinia. So, there's uh, a couple of balance changes I made. Other than that, I think all I need to do now is make some um, 
what's the word? Um, national ideas, and I'm kind of stuck in that because there's some issues I'm having with converting, with using a converted game and and putting some national ideas on it. I'm not sure why, but it's not working. I tried it with a normal mod, and it works fine. I'm betting there's something in, I'm just missing in that. But um, uh, this is going a lot faster than I kind of predicted because the converter works so well, actually. Um, there were a few things that I had to change, but since this is available, it was quite quick and easy to change it. And uh, I need to make that event for the schism because I, I wanted to do a schism for our religion with the Mezdakis and stuff like that. Um, I'm probably just going to copy wholesale from the uh, Catholic religion breakup thing, just because it's easier. Um, but notably, uh, the Zoroastrian religion is very bad in EU4. I'm not sure I want to change it, uh, but the bonus for it is basically a penalty. It makes it easier for people who own the province to change the province to another religion. And that is the only benefit. Now, it doesn't have any penalties aside from that. So if you never lose any provinces, it doesn't really do anything. But the thing is, it doesn't do anything. And if I wanted to add bonuses to the other religions, I'd have to either make them bad, or I'd have to change the bonus for our religion. And I don't know really what... Um, what I wanted to do with that. Oh, um, something I remembered. I haven't changed the names for these. I, I'm pretty much going to leave most of them the same. Beca I'll probably change this to Greece, actually. <laughs> because, um, I mean, the Persians never called themselves the Persian Empire. I, I'm fine with leaving the... Just as the Byzantines never called themselves the Byzantines. I'm fine with leaving most of these as having the same English names, just because it's easier for me to remember who's who in that in that case. It's not really necessary to be creative unless there's somebody else who already has the same name. Like, you can't just call everybody in France, France. you got to have different regional names. But there's no other Persia, so it's, it's fine. Um, but I did change the name of this. And this is a name that means Victorious Flame in Persia. That's basically, it's like, well, this, the, our peak of our, conver of our um, Crusading was the capture of Greece, which basically crippled the Byzantines. So, um, they have Constantinople, and... Yeah, I made a, cu a few custom... Um, ...governments, just to have different titles, basically. The Shah and Shah for Persian Empire basically just uses the same thing as the Empire, which it converted as um, feudal governments, sort of. Or I, I did a little bit of changes to make them a little bit more unique for these shahs, which are these. This one, this one has a special government called satrapy because it's small, so fuck them. <laughs> and uh, this one has a special government modeled slightly after the papacy, but there's no way to make a second papacy as far as I can tell. Um, the immortals have their own type of government because the basic uh, uh, theocracy gives you papal influence, which doesn't do anything, so I gave them a bonus to cavalry uh, cavalry power, um, which fits well with their their stuff. Um, they have a bit of a culture problem up there, but uh, I, I guess that's fine. Uh, they'll probably disappear, honestly, but, you know, I'll give them a fighting chance. I don't know what to do about the Timurids. They look all stupid, but... Uh, I'll probably leave them that way, just because they deserve it for me beating them. Um, the Elmira kids are an interesting situation. It's because they had low crown authority, they actually broke apart. Their their duchies broke off, and their vassals. I'm fine with that. They In my hands-off kind of observer games, they usually re reconquered them pretty quickly. Uh, re integrated them pretty quickly. It's only three provinces anyway, and they're not very good provinces, so it's it's not going to be a big deal for them to, to do things like that. Um, I still am going to do a little bit um, with some of the blobs like France. Now, France looks pretty small, but that's still really powerful, and they have a lot of vassals here, so 
I'll probably change that. Um, Aragon still needs to be deblobbed. I never did that. I might even add it. Aragon, I believe, is a, is a vassal of France, so I might add one of these provinces to. No, I'll probably make a Barcelona vassal for France. And do it that way. Um, because France, I mean, they start out basically in this state in the normal game, and they recover pretty quickly. It's it's not a matter of they look weak now, but they're they're still pretty strong even with just this. Uh, especially with everybody around them being roughly the same size, with the exception of Bavaria. But Bavaria is basically you know super um, Austria, so that's fine. Um, Spain is in an interesting configuration. I like that. England is <laughs> complete clusterfuck, which is fine. Uh, because they're in the Empire, I can't... Can I show the Empire? Yes. So the Empire looks like this. Um, I added... Um, this. Lotharingia and Bavaria to the Empire. And I think I'll just... Yeah, I'll set it the Ninth Templar. Pretty much everybody else was already in the Empire. Um... And since I de-blobbed a few things, like some of these I added to Brandenburg and stuff like that. Kurland, I don't know what their deal is. <laughs> they're just kind of up here. And they're Danish, so I, I'm not even sure what why they're in the Empire. I'll probably take them out, because that's kind of silly. But the Empire is really strong. Um, it's decentralized, so it's not as strong as it could be. But, um, yeah. And this is actually over here, in this province. Uh, because Susa owns it. And Susa is the current emperor. They're, they're down here. Um, so it looks like some kind of weird thing. Um, and everything you see here that's not owned by them is either owned by the Byzantines or uh, Amalfi. So, yeah. Um, as far as events go, I'll probably add a few, but I actually didn't get a lot of the events I added in EU3. So it, it ended up being a, a big waste of time to make so many events. So, I'm most of the, basically going to have the uh, schism, and I'm basically going to leave the rest of it to flow organically, so that, you know, I'm not um, either getting too much of a bonus or just wasting my time uh, making a lot of penalties that are never going to happen. Most of the things I had were things that, if something bad happened, things would get worse, but, you know, that never really ended up happening. It was mostly relating to France. Um, but I killed France. Anyway, um... I'm starting to babble, so I'm going to cut this off. I might make another one of these when I'm done, if I figure out what the problem I, I had with with the uh, national ideas is. Um, other than that, I'll probably get started recording maybe this weekend, because this is going a lot faster than I was expecting. And then I'll probably have some videos for it up Monday, hopefully. Uh, I'll keep you guys up to date if I'm going to miss that deadline, but I will. I'll see you later.